Hi, Ruby Lane. Welcome back to the wedding of the century. Um, Rachel's left working the camera. She's got a little bit of a sore throat, and we're going to let her rest her voice. Unfortunately, all you have is me, Michael Canadas, with the Grovey and Dahl Museum. Um, the wedding of the century. In the last century, the wedding of the century was Princess Diana and um, whatever is that? Prince Charles. Prince Charles. That was the wedding that was filmed, and then the wedding before was the Queen. But if we go back into the 19th century, the wedding of the century was really at the same point in our history with the worst time in our history. It was the Civil War raging, full-on raging. And at that time, there were two, a group of little people. They were little, under 30 inches, 28 inches, and one of them was named General Tom Thumb, and the other was Lavinia Warren. And they fell in love and they were married. They worked for P.T. Barnum. And at that period in time, P.T. Barnum did not have a circus, as in Barnum and Bailey. It was more entertainment, um, museums and various entertainments. And they worked for him and they fell in love. They had a wedding in New York City that was attended by 10,000 people. The wedding was the first thing that gave the North and South a little relief because instead of blood and gore on the newspapers, the cover of newspapers throughout the country, it was all about the, the Thumbs wedding, which was sensational. Remember, people had never seen little people like them they were famous for being absolutely perfectly proportioned. Um, when Abraham Lincoln met them at a reception in the White House, he was thrilled to meet them because he felt that uh, Lavinia looked a lot like Mary Todd Lincoln. And there was such a crush at the White House for people to see them at the reception that Abraham Lincoln picked them up and put them on the grand piano uh, so that that way they wouldn't be crushed by the, the onlookers. The wedding was such an event that there were people that sold tickets to the wedding for $1,000. And that was a tremendous amount of money at that time. Um, they were superstars. And not only were they married, their uh, um, uh, Groomsmen and um, uh, maid of honor were also little people. And what made it very tense as um, Tom Thumb's uh, groom was absolutely in love with Lavinia Warren. So it was really a very uh, interesting time. Now, uh, Rachel has done a lot of work helping us with Rose Percy. And there is an absolute connection to what we're gonna show you today and Rose Percy. The wedding happened. The following spring was another historic event, which was the Metropolitan Fair, where Rose Percy comes from. If you Google Rose Percy, you can learn about her and you can learn about the Sanitary Fair and Sanitary Fair dolls. Rose was not the only one. There were hundreds and hundreds, if not probably thousands of dolls and playthings at that event. But someone, we don't know who, created Mr. and Mrs. Tom Thumb with a trunk and trousseau of clothes. So I'm going to stand out of the way, because you've been very patient, and let you have a look at Mr. and Mrs. Tom Thumb. And we'll pan it a little bit, and then I'm going to go back and talk about them. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Tom Thumb are actually very simple Civil War era China hens. And they're less than eight inches tall. And they're probably made by Kister. But they are amazing that someone went to the trouble to do this to help the Union cause and our soldiers. And they really almost have spot on to Lavinia Warren um, Mrs. Tom Thumb's wedding gown. And although she was Mrs. Tom Thumb, 
she most of her life kept her own name, which was Lavinia Warren. And her sister was her maid of honor, who was absolutely beautiful. And her name was Minnie Warren, and she was actually tinier than Mrs. 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 Thumb. Imagine that she was no bigger than a large French fashion doll. So everyone there was enchanted uh, with them. This is a wonderful piece that we have known about for many, many years. It was once in Dorothy Dixon and Winnie Langley's uh, collection and John Noble wrote about it. And um, when they passed, it traveled across the pond and was in England for a time. And I waited seven years to have this come my way. But if you notice these boxes, these are thread boxes, and they're really wonderful little thread boxes. Um, most of this doll's, these dolls' wardrobes life, each article of clothing has been in these boxes. So we're probably the first people to have them out of the boxes and um, displaying them. Yes, this preserved them, but there's a point where being kind of crushed into the boxes does the items damage. So they probably won't ever go back into the boxes again. But here they studied the colors that uh, Lavinia loved and the colors that were per uh, at the time popular, such as lavender, it was known as the Lavender Age, blue, union blue, that's a union blue, um, gold and black, um, uh, again, a, a purple, dusty purple and black, green and cream, all beautiful. If you notice that the dresses have different shapes, that's because they had different functions. The bigger the dress, that's, those, are, those are the evening dresses for balls and things. Remember that they were entertainers, so they had to always look fantastic wherever they went. Tom Thumb was a particular favorite of Queen Victoria. She loved him, and he entertained her quite often. And she even gave them, as a wedding gift, a little special um, carriage, a miniature golden uh, carriage um, as, a, as a gift. Now, the reason we know that there is a connection to the Metropolitan Fair in Mo Rose Percy is because Unknown to a lot of people, including John Noble, on the bottom of the trunk, this is their trunk, on the bottom of the trunk it are the words Metropolitan Fair. And in the back lid you see generals, and there are generals throughout the trunk, um, you know, lithographed um, generals. Well, they had a lottery at the fair of who was the favorite general. So you would if you like General Grant, you'd put a dollar down and to win to uh, have the lottery of your favorite general. So that's why this, in a way, feminine thing has this masculine con connection to warfare. Um, Mr. Thumb doesn't have a lot of items, and I kind of feel that is because, let's face it, ladies that sew, they would rather make dresses than little suits and little suits are um, harder to make. But he does have some really outstanding items, such as his shirt. And in the trunk, there are some other items, for, for wool items for, for him that are in bad condition. We're going at some point curate them. But then he has his, his phenomenal suitcase with uh, um, umbrellas and all kinds of masculine things. And then he has his cravats, which are ties, bow ties. Let's see if I can get that open. So they're all there, little wonderful, little wonderful tiny things. They're so small that they could actually fit into, live in a dollhouse. They really could. And they actually themselves, they, the house that they had in um, Connecticut, you could also just about say it's a dollhouse. And then let me show you here. Here's another box that has collars and cuffs. So you've got your collars and your cuffs. And they were very clever that they made, basically made the collars for him out of paper because guess what? For men, 
of most collars at that period were made out of a form of stiffened fabric or actually paper. So that was really spot on. And then they have all their little, little items. And one thing that's very interesting about this grouping of things that have not been taken apart is a lot of people do not know this, that in a wardrobe of dolls, you would have your linens. You would have your linens and you'd have your pillows because that was really part of a wardrobe for, for, um, um, uh, for a wedding, you know, you fit your trousseau really had your linens because cottons were extremely valuable. They were much more valuable than anything we pay for today. That's why we had a civil war was over that very idea. But the thing that, and those of you that are prudish, cover your ears because this is a really historic item of linen that I don't know that exists anywhere else. But this is a sheet that would be used on the wedding night. Now, you could say that that is obscene today, but that was a perfectly normal and natural thing at the time. So those of you with a great imagination, you can let your imagination run, run with that. And then here are all their hand towels. These are exquisite, beautifully made. Almost in a way, there's more skill in this than there are in a lot of the clothes because, you know, the flounces and things can cover up a lot of um, um, mistakes in sewing. But you cannot fool cotton; it will it will call you out. Then another thing that's really wonderful is look at this tiny little nightgown, and I don't know if the camera can get it, but look at those minuscule stitches. So the person that put this together for the Metropolitan Fair really had a superior talent, but a lot of people did then. And look at how they managed to do this in a, without a set in sleeve, but it flows so beautifully. It's just a really wonderful piece. And of course she has all of her underpinnings. She has a, a slip, pantalettes, and again, a fabulous chemise. Just super little, and that's, I mean, look at that, that's tiny. And she's wearing, of course, everything that she's supposed to have now, she's wearing it. You know, her underpants and her, her pantalettes, and then look at this little beauty. It's just, now there are no hooks and eyes um, in these things, they're so small, that they would use just pins, and that is a common thing that you'd find as a closure in a small doll. Because really, if you put a button, unless you have tiny, tiny buttons, it kind of ruins the line. But here we have a wonderful little print with tiny soutache trim. And what's amazing is the sizing is still in this 157 years later. It's just in amazing condition. And, you know, you kind of have to figure that's the, could be either way, but that is the front. And here we have the period of sloping shoulders. A lot of pattern makers today, if they're going to redress a doll, they don't think about that their shoulders sloped and that they really, you don't want to dis now we would think there's something wrong with your posture, but then that was a, a desired look. And this lavender piece is just a little dream. And this is probably a reception dress, so it's not a full-on ball gown, but probably for a reception. And it would have its matching cape. And look at that feather stitching. And it's a matching cape with a hood, because she wouldn't want to go out and have her um, hair messed. They had a very hard time living a normal life uh, that the average person not because they were necessarily because they were small. It's because they were really, truly superstars. They were the Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton of their day. Everywhere they went, everything that they did was uh, scrutinized. And the difference between them and, say, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, I mean, they could be easily hurt because of their, their size. 
Um, so they really had um, uh, an amazing life and they were both very accomplished performers. Um, they were not uh, circus freaks. Um, they were um, highly accomplished and traveled in the, the upper, upper echelon of society. And then I should have you look at these little prints because they're just amazing that they chose the size and how they used them. Um, just a kind of a super, super little piece. And I should also tell you about Tom Thumb weddings. Because of their sensational wedding that everyone followed, after that wedding and still even today, there is a tradition of Tom Thumb weddings. And the funny thing is the, the people that really took on to that were the South, where you would have a fundraiser and you would get together adorable little children and you would create a child wedding and you'd sell tickets to see it and the little tiny ones would come down in wedding dresses and handmaidens and flower girls and it would be just a fun kid, a child party and they're called Tom Thumb Weddings. And if you do not believe me, you go onto the internet and you put up Tom Thumb Weddings and you're gonna see all kinds of pictures of from the 1860s to the 1960s of, you know, cute little Tom Thumb weddings. Um, you know, this is really one of our treasures and we we don't adulterate things that are all original, but we also have to realize that they, we're not gonna say to a donor that says, I have this wonderful thing and I wanna give it to you, which is 1866, Tom Thumb in his signature. Well, of course, I'm going to take this. Now, would I put this in the, the collection and, and you know, it's noted that the, you know, the person that's given us this to us, but this is just a wonderful thing to have. That's an original photograph. And then just recently, someone that really very unselfishly for what was going on in their life wanted to make sure that we had this gift. I'll show it to you first before I struggle to open it because I don't have my glasses. Oh, I do have them, but I just don't have them on. Here, I better put them on. Hold on. Talk amongst yourself. Here, now I'll let you see that in the front. It's a beautiful little shape like a, um, a suitcase with straps, but in it are all of these wonderful little photographs of the wedding. So this was a big deal at that time. Now someone uh, took out some of the photos. It could have been fallen out or a kid could have taken it. And at one period in time, they did do a little thing where they would pretended that they had a baby. I don't know that they ever really had a baby. We know that there were Baby, you know, that they pretended that they had a baby. But when I was in London last year, I watched a documentary where they think that they really did have a baby and that did not make it. So I don't know if that's true or not, but, you know, Tom Thumb is an enchanting item. Let's see that again. And he's really one of the, this, this little tableau is one of our most loved pieces that we have. And um, the, the people that signed up for our China camp, which we're doing uh, next year, they're, they're gonna have a little extra treat because on the final night, we're gonna have a Tom Thumb wedding that they're all going to get to come to. Well, I'm gonna sign off for the day. And I know Rachel says bye-bye, but she's not supposed to talk for a little bit because we wanna get her voice back to normal tomorrow. Thank you, everyone at Ruby Lane. Bye-bye.